clothes because you guys have the best clothes. Oh God, thank you very much. We borrow them from Ted and John. Yeah, Ted and John. Is that really why you're dressed alike today? Because you took their clothes. <laughs> Um, we shop all over the place, but we try, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's rewarding that people are com commenting on our clothes now because we used to have terrible fashion. Like, from like, from like, as soon as my mom started letting us dress ourselves, so starting around like three years old till about 27, I just wish we could just erase everything that happened. It's erased. Delete, delete, delete. Just delete. Yeah, if the internet didn't exist, this would be a possibility. Well, there, you have tons of fans here, but when we put this on the website, there might be people hearing you for the first time. So how would you describe the sound of this album or your sound in general to those people? Well, this record, Heartthrob, is definitely you know, our most pop sort of uh, sounding record, but I think that we've sort of been on a musical evolution since we started back in the 90s. I mean, we were, I think we've been, we're not totally out to lunch, like we sort of have been following trends naturally, and, and, and the music that's popular and the music that we listen to typically does tend to influence our record. So, you know, we've been through all sorts of stages from indie rock to indie pop and now much more pop, but we also have collaborated with tons of dance artists. But I think what, what it really comes down to, what Tegan and Sarah really is, and there's really no place in a record store for this genre, but I think that most importantly, we are songwriters. And so, you know, what always sort of is a, a, a must have for Tegan and Sarah a song is that it can be taken down to its most basic form. So if Sarah and I can't sit in a room and play a song acoustically, then it doesn't make the record. Because ultimately we feel like it's our connection with our audience and, and their projection onto the song and what it means to them and our own stories that sort of end up keeping the song alive. And, and so, um, you know, this record is definitely pop leading, but I think it's still 10 Tegan and Sarah songs. You know, there's still a lot of heartbreak, a lot of longing, a lot of sadness, and, and there's actually some romance for the first time. We're not totally unhappy trolls. We actually <laughs> have some happiness. We do manage to squeeze a tiny bit of joy out of life. So. I wanted to ask you about that. Do you, do you sort of balance each other out? Like one is writing really bitter, negative songs, and the other's like, come on, we have to pick it up a little bit. <laughs> no, but I definitely, I, I definitely, the feedback for me lyrically to Tegan was, that she is in a really happy place in her life. And so um, I think, you know, saying like, it's okay to write about that, or it's okay to, you know, I think it can, you can have just as much, you know, depth to a song, just, I mean, to, on some level. I mean, I do think heartbreak songs really resonate differently with people, but I do think you can have depth to a song and still be singing about something that's happy. So I was, I was really happy to hear a song like uh, Closer, and there's another song, Drove Me Wild on the record, that they're like just real like party anthems. Tegan gets upset when I say party, because I don't think she's been to one since the 90s, but <laughs> she just remembers them from the 90s. And, um, but they Tegan, parties are so cool now. They're, they're totally fun. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool to have party music now. It's fun. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think of LMFO or whatever when Sarah says party. I just want to jump across the stage. No, no, no. I mean party like, you know, like, uh, like Hey Ya by like Outkast. Okay. You know, like, you know, if you put that song on, every single person in the room just like, it, like they desperately want to put down their shrimp cocktail and martini and dance. What kind of I've party I've never been to a house party. I've never been to a house party with shrimp cocktail. I was going to say neither have I. I don't know what that is. That is food guys. poisoning in a tall glass. I just want everyone to know that's how I feel about shrimp cocktails. And I heard that you guys wrote together more on this album than any other. Did that just happen, or did you feel like you wanted to do it this time? Well, we do a, a lot of collaborating with other artists, and it always has worked out really well. So we just kind of naturally kind of got to a place where we're like, well, maybe we should do a bit of writing together. So. On all of my songs on the record, Sarah collaborated with me, so she helped co-write the chorus on Closer, and she wrote the bridge on um, Drove Me Wild, and, and I Was a Fool, we just played that, she wrote the bridge on that one, so I think that my big thing with this record was I really wanted it to be like a Tegan and Sarah record. Oftentimes we write separately, and the record ends up having maybe two different sides to it, two, two different feels, which has been great, and I think it's actually probably something that our fans really love, but the feedback we'd been getting a lot was that people really loved the collaborations we were doing and they seemed to really love when we sing together and there was just a natural, there was just this natural feeling of like, well, let's try to do more of that on this record and we've been around for like 500 years so it was sort of like, you gotta keep stuff fresh and, and every time we go into the studio to make a record we, we do sit down and have sort of like a conversation about how to make things feel fresh and exciting, not just not just for us, but also for our audience. I think sometimes our audience thinks they want the same record again and again. Like people come up to me every single day of my life and tell me they wish that we would write another record like The Con, but I think they'd feel ripped off if we just tried to give them that same record. But I think that Heartthrob competes with The Con almost because it is, there were some devastating moments on that, on this new record. Like Sarah really gives her, like songs like Now I'm All Messed Up and How Come You Don't Want Me. I mean, 
when Sarah sings that shit live, I'm all like, is there you at me? <laughs> and the fans are really responding to it. And, you know, we were opening for the Black Keys and the Killers last year, and, and you know, even in front of their audience, which oftentimes didn't know us, it was like those songs that were seeming to really resonate with them, which was really exciting, you know, so I think that's a big part of why we sort of adapted the sound of it. Well, let's talk about summer tour with fun. Yeah. July 22nd and 23rd at Pier 26, Hudson River Park. It's gonna yeah. be so fun. <laughs> Are you really gonna stick with the comedy thing? Um, I'm not sure about that. That one felt flat. That was a dad joke, and it felt that's flat. That's what I told. That's why I made the ham face she, afterwards. She deserved it to fall flat because it was too. I think it's gonna be such a fun summer. <laughs> so excited for the flat tour. Well, I think it's interesting that they actually cover the Stones in concert. They do. You can't always get what you want. You guys did a beautiful cover, "Fool to Cry" for girls on HBO. Yeah. Can you tease us with anything you're gonna do on tour? Any covers? Any collaborations? Oh anything you haven't played in a while? It's just us. I didn't even realize. I didn't realize they were playing that. That, uh, that they were playing a Rolling Stones song. Maybe maybe we should do like a Rolling Stones medley with them when we try. I think you should. I think you guys should definitely sing. I that. would love to get us all in leather pants and like come up with a <laughs> totally. routine. I'm into it. Those guys are so so wonderful. It's been you know we were we were friends with Jack Antonoff, who's the guitar player in the band. Um, when he was in Steel Train, we did a lot of touring <laughs> together in bands. Um, you know over the years, and so it's been really fun watching them um, have so much well-deserved success. And so we're really excited to do the tour with them. Like really excited. And what do you take with you to survive being on tour that long? What are like your must-haves to go on tour? We really, we we really have got it down to like our, our like you know like like our, our our own art form that like meets our needs. But I um, Sarah brings scotch. I mean, I I think yeah, we have to have a good good bottle of PD scotch and uh, bedding. Like we we travel on a tour bus, so I bring my own bedding and. Um, I think that we're clean freaks and finding time to be alone. Um, these aren't necessarily things that you can physically bring on tour, but finding time to be alone and take care of yourself, you know, it makes being on the road a little bit less dysfunctional. Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you do that without killing each other? You know, we just, we did, we, we're pretty good. I mean, after all these years, it's sort of, it's sort of like a marriage. Like, I think you, you know, when you, when you meet a couple, we're not a couple, but when you meet a couple, <laughs> we're business partners, but when you meet a couple that's been together 15 years, you think to yourself, God, you must be doing something right, you know, especially if they still seem happy and they like, you know, whatever. And I feel like that's us, you know, like there certainly is conflict and there's times where you feel like, you know, I think there are times where I don't feel as content with you, you know, there's complexities to the dynamic. But overall, you know, in 15 years of traveling and writing and working together, there's there's more than, more happy than not. And that's what keeps us, you know, staying in the band. 